Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So firstly, before we even start today's live stream, I can't be looking at these lights. So I've got to pull out, where are they? I've got to pull out the shades for this one. So anyone new passing through to today's live stream and they're like, why is this guy wearing these shades? It's because the lights are very, very bright and it's killing my eyes off. So forgive me. Here we go. So yeah, that makes life so much easier for me. I can now talk to you all without the glare of these mad lights in my face. So what's the story? Hmm. Bitcoin. Hedge fund managers. What are they up to? Well, we've, we've already spoken about this concept in the past about carry trading. You may be familiar with the discussion we had not so long ago about market makers and their gamma neutral and their their best attempts at trying to make sure that their positions are somewhat delta neutral. That means that they are eliminating risk on their positions, whether they are long or short. But we've got notification or word on the street says that these hedge fund managers are currently short. And that's the word on the street. They are at record bearish positions. However, the carry trade principles coming into play. So what does that mean? Well, even though they are short, they are hedging themselves at the potential of Bitcoin going higher. So what does that mean? Well, they're taking advantage of spot and futures. So they may be short on the futures, but they are actually picking up contracts in Bitcoin to hedge themselves. So that means they're buying up spot. Now, what I'm going to do in today's live stream is explain to you instances where this could actually be taking place and how we're going to be moving from one point in the chart to the next to suggest that this carry trade principle is being or is, is actually happening in front of us. OK, so then that way we're not thrown out with the idea of, oh, why is Bitcoin not going up or why is it not going down? I want my stochastics are coming into play. Why is it not going in my favor? When you understand what the bigger players are kind of doing, then it helps you understand how likely a trade is going to work in your favor. If you think in probabilities, then you're eliminating the idea of emotion. If you already know how much you're going to lose, you park the idea of emotion. It's when you don't know how much you're going to lose. That's when things get a little bit complicated. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, with that being said, let's get into the charts today, ladies and gentlemen. The markets will be opening in 20 minutes time. We've just had the unemployment claims data coming in significantly higher than what they had projected. So the idea is, OK, if more people are claiming benefit, that's good news for the Fed, because remember, they're basing it all on data. But the real daddy for information about the employment market is tomorrow. That's where the average hourly earnings are due, which they're projecting to come in higher. The non-farm payrolls, which is they're projecting to come in lower. And then we've got the unemployment rate. So let's get with the flavor, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's live stream. I hope you're all doing well. Forgive me again for the shades. Yeah, we do look like we're some men in black kind of flavor. But... <sighs> I can't do it. I can't be watching these, these bright lights. All right. So let's get with the flame. Ray Charles, I'll take that. <laughs> I will take that. <laughs> other people are going to say other things, but hey, let's get with the program, ladies and gentlemen. Mad love and respect to you all. Here we go. All right, then. So <clears throat> this is what we're talking about today. Hedge funds hold record bearish Bitcoin bets. Why is this important for us? Okay. So we know where they are and people will see this and be like, oh, my God, go short on Bitcoin. But the carry trade principle is present. So what is the carry trade principle? Well, originally, the carry trade principle is something known in Forex. Now, some of the guys will know exactly what I'm talking about when we talk about the carry trade principle. And that is in reference to the dollar, the yen. And an example would be the Aussie dollar. OK, well, the Aussie, should I say? All right. So let's just put things into perspective so you can understand exactly what I mean to help you understand that. Don't worry about Bitcoin. Don't worry. So here we go. Let's take the logic of Aussie dollar. Oh, sorry, Aussie yen. All right. And the dollar dominance. 
So what do you see here? You can clearly see that there is a relationship right now. So let me just change this and put it as candles. Okay, so you can see. All right, happy days. In front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is a classic example of the carry trade principle when it comes to Forex. So what do investors do or hedge fund managers? What do they do? Remember, they have to hedge themselves. Okay, so what they do is they actually use dollar because dollar and yen are technically low yielding assets. Okay, so they don't generate that much of a return. But when you borrow dollars and then use those dollars and convert them into another asset, which is high yielding, like the Aussie, you get this disparity here. So if you're going to be trading Forex, it would serve you to understand where we are in relation to the Aussie yen and the dollar. When the dollar's going down, the Aussie's going up. What else will be going up against the Aussie? Well, we can then take the NASDAQ and the S&P. The blue line is the NASDAQ. Aussie dollar, Aussie yen, sorry, are the candlesticks, the vectors. And this one down here is the dollar dominance. So the idea is that when you're borrowing dollars, you then exchange those dollars into Aussie, go out and buy yourself some stocks, go and buy yourself some other assets like Euro, maybe even Bitcoin. And effectively, take advantage of the fact that the Aussie is high yielding against the dollar. When you're done with your positions, when the Aussie starts to pull back, the dollar in principle will start moving up. Why? Because the guys that have borrowed the dollars to go and pick up the Aussie, they will effectively need to sell those Aussie back into dollars, which means the dollar will be going up against the Aussie yen, which means they're selling stock, which means they're selling commodities, which means they're selling Bitcoin. Now, this is an example of the carry trade principle, but you can see clear as day that when the dollar goes up, the Aussie goes down because they are effectively. So here's the dollar here, right? That's the dollar at this point to put it into perspective. That's the dollar at its high. This is Aussie at its low. So when Aussie is selling off, that means they are transacting on Aussie to convert back to dollars to return the borrowed dollars. And this transaction is happening over and over again. But it's all going to be about the timing of when they do it. Because if naturally the dollar itself is showing strength, even though the purchasing power of the dollar has dropped to around, well, it's less than 25% of what it was before. The idea is that these hedge fund managers will bounce in between and pick certain times when they actually borrow dollars to convert into Aussie. So you can see that Aussie, since the 1st of April, has not stopped going up. That means they've borrowed dollars, converted them into Aussie, and they've gone out and bought stocks. Look at the NASDAQ. It's not stopped going up. Look at Bitcoin. Well, slowly going up. It's taking a little while. But when we're talking about Forex, that's what you really want to be focusing on. The idea of value. You've got to think of how does a hedge fund manager want to protect himself? How does he do it? He goes in one asset, moves over to the other. And when you see this, this, this relationship here, you can get a good feel for what's actually going on. Now, we can see that Aussie is trading significantly higher. We know the dollar is trading significantly lower. We know the euro is trading significantly higher. We've got ourselves the non-farm payrolls coming into play tomorrow. So could this all be one big setup for a surprise reading from the non-farm payrolls? And I've said it before and I will say it again. Is Bitcoin giving us the clue? Because everything's moved up against Bitcoin. Bitcoin hasn't moved up really. Now, we're seeing Bitcoin making a move right now, ladies and gentlemen. Like, let's just go into the chart with BTC. Like, let's just get rid of all of this. Let me just get rid of that. Bang, bang. Go over to Bitcoin. You can see Bitcoin is doing fantastically well. It's moving away from this zone that we've got. Okay. And the recovery of the red vector candle seems like it wants to come into play. Could this be the midweek reversal point for BTC? Going into the book map, you can see that the offers are coming into play, ladies and gentlemen. 
They're all up there. We just had a few pullbacks just there. But minus 32% of the top side right there is suggesting to me, and it's changing. Look, minus 30, minus 29, minus 41, minus 43. That's good news. Minus 44. That's brilliant. It means that the offers are coming in. So that only means that the boys here are satisfied with their positions. Ah, we had another gang come in. Here we go. Last night. They came in 13 million. They transacted 14. Happy days. Now the offers are coming in. So they're selling Bitcoin. Do we understand that, ladies and gentlemen? Please tell me. Do we understand that the idea of Bitcoin is now being sold? Are we are we all on the same frame, mind frame of that? Give me a hey ya, uh, give me a ura. Uh, whatever it is you want to say that you've done, that you understand what I'm talking about right now. Okay, something else you want to be paying attention to. Check this out. Ooh, yeah, baby. We have now got the logic of value. Let's justify the idea of why we believe Bitcoin could be going higher. Who's on the offers? 224 on the offers right there. This is the same. It's all the same. Okay, but just focus on the middle one. 236 on the offers, 166 on the offers right there. So we've got this cluster area here where there's a lot of guys that want to offer out Bitcoin around the 67 zone, 67,300 zone, okay? Now we go even further up, not much happening. What we really need to be seeing Bitcoin doing right now, as we are now going into what appears to be... Wait there, wait there, wait there. Please tell me. Are we there yet? Ladies and gentlemen, we are effectively in value area high. We are now in value. There it is right there. I can't see. Mad. Oh, wow. That's bright. Value area high. We're away from the value now. So remember the story about the nightclub with the groups of women, okay? The more expensive women are right here right now. We're working on how long they're going to spend paying premium for those women, Okay, remember, value area low are the women that only like to drink orange juice. The guys, the women that are in the value area high are the women that like to drink the champagne. Okay, that's where we are right now. And the value area high is an area consistent with reversals. But we need to consider where we have been and how long we've been there for. Because that's going to help us understand that this area here with the collection of the bid orders is going to suggest that we're going to see a frequency of offers coming in, which is what is happening right now. Okay. What else have we got? Here we go. Book map. Clearing out the offers. Moving away from the VWAP. Okay. Nice day. Looks like it's a good day today, ladies and gentlemen. And Bitcoin spent enough bloody time in here anyway. So about bloody time. Anyways, any questions that we've got going off so far? So good. What is a woman? What a guy. <laughs> How to make... Hey, man, we got women in here as well. We got to show love to the women. All right? We've got women in here. Okay? And they're traders. Beasts. I like that. Anyways. Any other questions? What have we got? Anyone asking questions? Stop run. Well, look, this is what you got to understand. The time that it has spent inside of this area, I don't see it as a stop run. But whenever we hit vector candles, see, what you've got to be very mindful of is this. This started off a wave of bids. So that's why we consider the midpoint of the vector candle where we can anticipate a reaction. If they mean business, this thing's going to fly through. Look what day it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Thursday. The usual consensus states that when they move away from the psychological ranges, we expect them to come back to them by the end of the week. In the eyes of Forex, tomorrow is the end of the week. In crypto, Saturday is the end of the week. Okay? So... That's what we're looking at right now. If we go into even smaller time frames themselves, you can see there's a nice consistent run, okay? We've got vectors coming away and the first green vector candle above the 50 EMA, okay? Right here, you see you had this one, but you had the 200 EMA up there as a bit of a resistance point. But now if you notice this green vector candle, which is closing stronger, and where are they? I mean, platinum members, what's this? 
Platinum members, can you please tell me what this is? I want, I want to know if the Platinum members are in here. What is this, Platinum members? We did it last week. We did it at the weekend. What is it? I'm going to wait for someone to say it. <laughs> Man, we're giving love to the women in the chat. Happy days. Happy days. Nice. We're coming towards that midpoint. Getting close towards it. So what's that candlestick? Uh, Yars Dan. Yes, it's a candle. It's a candle. There we go. Climatic candle, ladies and gentlemen. The clue for the trap. Okay. There we go. There we go. Fair play to you all. Fair play. Yes, it's a vector candle. Cause and effect, baby. Cause and effect. There's your vector candle, ladies and gentlemen. Happy days. We're going up. Seems like we've seen the promise right now. Okay. Going over into here. Let's go and have a look. Where the value area? Here we go. Got 203 right there on the offers. Okay, they just pulled that adding to it again. That's good news for us. This is the one-day profile. Okay, so just be mindful. This is the one-day profile, the 25 and the five-day. These profiles right here, they need a little bit more wait, um, a few more days. Well, we actually got this resets tomorrow, okay? But just be mindful that this, this area here is for the whole month. So we're going to be paying attention to this. But this is the one-day profile, and we are already gone above and beyond the value area high. Now, if you look here, okay, on this value area high zone, we really need to see Bitcoin. You see that point of control right there on the daily? It's 1.9, okay? If we go down a little bit further, we've got 9,641 on the point of control for the 25-day, all right? So hopefully, if Bitcoin can sustain this behavior and keep on trending higher, that means we're going to hope that they can actually transact even more up here to move the point of control. But we've got a lot of work to do with that because there's not any contracts up here that are transacting above 9,000 or even 4,000, okay? So even be halfway there. Look at this offer here, 192, keeps adding 200 right there. And you've got this order up here, 124. So there is clear, and look at the offers, hit, look at the bids. Notice the cluster of bids close by, okay? Compared to the offers. So they're quickly coming down, picking up the bids. The guys are lifting the ass. Come on, I want to sell. I want to sell. I've been buying up all week. I want to sell now. And they're all rushing in to try and quickly offer out to the guys. Load up a bit more, offer out. Load up, offer out. They want to sell into those guys, okay? So that's what we're looking at and witnessing right now, ladies and gentlemen. The beauty of the green vector candle. Happy days. I'm liking that. Get book map up. Have a look at that. Let's have a look. We've got pressure on the order book itself, which is this little thing right here. The order book, not really showing that much pressure just yet, but we had a little bit of a retrace. Got to be very careful with the green vector candle because the market's not even open just yet. So we've got to be very mindful of that. Quickly going and have a look at other things across the board. Euros, not really following through just yet. So got to be very careful with Euro because the Aussie dollar principle, Aussie yen, you know, they are extended to the upside. Going to have a look at gold. She's now pulled back. We're now looking to see if gold can effectively make the recovery back up. Quickly going over into the oilage. <laughs> hey, oil's doing the flavor, huh? Not really going that far, but they are recovering certain vector candles. So that's very important for us. Quickly going into the Ethereums. Mm. Ethereum, nice clean sweep lower. Look, they did that twice. Twice in the Asian session. Stop, hunt, run, low, off you go. Solanage, up she goes. Happy days. It looks like for the setups in cryptocurrency, we're doing pretty well so far. That's good news for us. Okay, let's have a look at the NASDAQ and the S&P. Where are they at? Mm. Oh, my days, man. Back into vector candle recovery. Just be careful, guys. Be careful. They did it yesterday. They'll do it again today. They'll sweep up, mark it up for a couple of hours. And then they'll roll. So just be mindful of that with the NASDAQ and the S&P. Quickly going into the yields. The yields are coming down, which is good news for us. Go to the 10-year yield itself. We're seeing the yields going down. That's what we want to see. We want the yields to go down. We want them to go down. Because it means that the government now has to... Uh, people are now picking up government bonds. 
Okay, and when they're picking up government bonds, there's also this battle between picking up bonds and going in the stock market as well. So how is risk being distributed? Are they favoring shorter term risk? In other words, are they favoring to go into the stock market and pick up stocks and get higher risk? Or are they favoring low risk and going into the bonds? The sweet spot is when the bonds go up, the stock market goes up, the yields go down, we're all good. OK, it's when you get that little battle between the stock market and the bonds market where the bonds go up, but the stock market goes down, which means that assets, or should I say investors, are not favoring holding on to risk. They don't want riskier assets. They want shorter risk. They want lower risk. That means they'll go to the bonds. OK, so with that being said, going over to BTC, ah, it's pulling back right now. See, pulling back. So we've got to be very careful with this. Very careful. Remember what we said about the value area high. This area is consistent with reversals. So just take that into consideration when you are actually trading, okay? They can come all the way down back into value because look, the VWAP's there, VWAP. VWAP right there at the 66,918, okay? So just be mindful. Going into the liquidations, remember, people are buying as prices going up. That's the sad truth about it all. Let's just clear that. Good afternoon, man. What's going on? What is good? Yeah, I'm wearing these shades, man, because the lights are too bright. I've got the worst, worst headache. Here we go. So let's just have a look at the liquidation. We've got some nice gang up here, around $71,000, $72,000 for that liquidation points of the shorts. Quickly going into the profile of how are people behaving right now in terms of buying and selling. Look, there you go. You've got some guys buying. Look. <laughs> They're buying. <laughs> Sad. Someone went long up here at 67,444. And then when you marry it up with the logic of exo charts, you see, now those offers are starting to disappear. So they're now going to try and pick up on the bids. The thicker the bids go, the more likely price is going to go and eat some of the liquidity of the bids. So that principally means price should be going down. Then when we're waiting to see if they can stay above the value area high to continue to transact, the good thing about Bitcoin is this. It likes to hold specific zones and it generates a profile of interest. Ideally, what we're looking for is something like this, where you see the point of control. We need to see the order sum of around six, eight, six, four, seven. We want to see around eight and a half thousand to 10,000 contracts transacting in a specific zone for us to get information about the interest as to whether or not they're favoring low, keeping price at this point to buy it or keeping price at this point to sell it. Remember, the value of Bitcoin is only going to be based on the number that put someone is prepared to pay for it. That's what you've got to look at. They're going to be only what they're prepared to pay for it. And our goal as investors and traders is to understand, look, every time it comes back down, we've got to say to ourselves, is it coming down to sell off or is it coming down to pick up the bids? I'm not interested in retail. I don't want to know what retail's doing. I know what retail's doing. They're already buying in the wrong instance. They're selling at the wrong time and they're buying at the wrong time. That is evident with this thing right here. Look at this poor dude. He went long at 67,444. Now, price is 67229 You think he's got enough leverage or he's using more leverage and you think he's got the margin to be able to withstand that if he's going at 100x or even higher, 125x, even higher on some platforms, 188 or 200x. You think they've got the capacity to absorb that? No. That's why when you see a big move up like this by Bitcoin, they've gone and swept the liquidity. They're going to come back down to collect some more bids to come back up later on. Okay. That's the way the game rolls, ladies and gentlemen. All right? So the market is yet to open yet. What have we got here? Tiny wonder. Do you know what? I don't even know if it's because my blood pressure is high. I don't know. I'm going to go check that out today. I'm going to the doctors today to get it checked again. Um, Tina, do you have any tips for exit strategy? Because I have every time that I close too early, when the, even though I wait at, okay, exit strategy. Your exit strategy is, um, has price gone into a significant area of interest? So what does that mean? Well, look, if you were long inside of this area and price has now made the move to the upside, you've gone into a vector candle recovery, which statistically shows that when they do come back into these midpoints or the vector candles, they're usually going to trigger the same behavior that happened over here, okay? So you can look at it like that, but don't ever base your decision on, on money. Don't base it on money. Always base it on the structure of the chart. 
See, if you're in a long right now, ask yourself the reason. Do you have any reason to close your trade? Technically, no, because it's not going down. It's still trying to climb up. If your entry point was down here, ladies and gentlemen, if your entry point was here, do you have any reason to get out? Well, no, because price is all the way up here. Now, what point in this move, from this move to the upside, would you then say, right, I need to protect myself? Well, you should technically close off at least, at least get a quarter of the profit, lock it in, because you, even if it does hit that, okay, you're then dealt with the psychology of, I know it's gone up here, and if it goes back down here, I only make $100 if it hits this line, when I could have made $500 even though it's up here. That's on you. If you want to make it, but chill out, man. That's on you, all right? That's on down to your preference of risk. What's your exposure like, okay? If you can make a trade free of charge, then that, ladies and gentlemen, is the progress you want. You really want to do that. But be careful when you're choosing the asset to do that with. Don't even bother trying to do it with Bitcoin. What do I mean? So you go long from this point right here, okay? Before it made the move to the upside. You really want to be placing your stop outside of this whole range. So we then go down to this point here. We say to ourselves, I go long at 66,384 and then my exit is 65,327. I'm giving Bitcoin roughly around a thousand dollar move. If you can't allow Bitcoin to move a thousand dollars as a stop, you're using too much leverage. You're putting too much pressure on yourself, all right? When you've got a $1,000 stop, that's reasonable. And this is on the 15-minute time frame. Some of you might even be able to put more flexibility and then just put a stop outside of this range right here and give yourself a two grand stop. That's awesome. Look at that. Do you understand what Bitcoin has to do for you to come and for price to make its way down to your stop? What you do in this instance is you need to take the midpoint of this whole range. So find the highest point, find the lowest point. So let's make that assumption. There's the midpoint of this range. And that sits at the 65,700, hypothetically, okay? You're saying that you're stopped down here, all right? Let's, let's, let's move it to this. No, let's, let, let's do this, actually. Let's make it like this. Let's say our stop is here, yeah, outside the structure. We'll take the stop, and then we'll take the absolute highest point of this range that we've got with Bitcoin, okay? This is for your stop. So you've gone long here, okay, at the 66,412. The midpoint of this whole range is at 65,622 and your exit is all the way down here at 64,339. If price does come back down to your midpoint, that is where you're going to be dealt with a decision. You're either going to close the trade. Just because your stop is there doesn't mean you have to let it hit. If you see price coming back down towards the 65,622 and you start seeing red vector candles coming into play and you're thinking, hold on a second, man. This could be a stop run to the upside to come back down. Bitcoin could actually go down lower. They might need to even come and recover this green vector candle wick. And you see price coming into this area here. And you then see price trading below the moving average. And you're left with a decision. You then close off your trade, change, change direction. And you trade towards what your stop was originally. Don't let it go into that. Don't think like, but what if, what if, what if. Don't do that. You're not in a position to be thinking what if when you're dealing with the uncertainty. It will always be what if with uncertainty. All you have to do is trade what is now. What is now? At the time you took the trade at this point right here, what is happening now? Well, Bitcoin is breaking away from this range. It's coming away from a big structure like a W formation. I would only assume it's going to try and mark up and see a little bit of volatility. I've got the logic of all the bids and the offers coming into play inside of this zone. I'm expecting them to mark up and start transacting on those bids. Yeah? That's the only way you can really look at it, ladies and gentlemen. There's no magic science behind it. Again, of course, execution is key. But you will always end up shaking yourself out when you use too much leverage and you just don't give the asset you're trading a chance to move. You know, what else have we got? Tino, what's your suggestion of a kind of easy asset to trade with? In my honest opinion, S&P is an easy asset. It really is. Trade the S&P. Um, AM, hey Tino, the coin glass liquidation map for ETH on seven day profile shows huge liquidation points between 3392 and 3440. 
This is the level three days VWAP consistent with reversals and value high percent of and value high 50% of the one hour vector. Also their opinion. Um, Nine two. Level three days V wrap three day level V wrap consistent with reversals. Okay then. You've got to look at it like this. If we're gonna say let's anchor the V wrap, right? Let's anchor V wraps. Take the significant high, go across. All right? There's the V wrap. Look at where it reversed from. Typical. All right? Look at that. So now what we want to understand is the logic here. This is for Ethereum. We've got a long-term trend. Well, not so much long-term, but the previous high, significant high, that's the VWAP. It's just rejected that. Cool. Now take another anchor from the lows. That's where we are. Support. Take another anchor. Go this one right here. Cool. So the idea is that these anchored VWAPs here would then suggest that this is where they are looking at loading up. All right? So if price were to come back down, these could be areas of support. Now, remember, as price moves and trades, each new candlestick brings us the VWAP going closer and making a move. OK, so it's expanding out. So you've got to sit and wait for it because the idea is inside of this zone right here, we could get ourselves a little W formation, rise up, retrace into the VWAPs, consolidate, continuation out. That's what we would logically assume could happen. OK, so the idea is that Wait for the VWAPs here to try and build themselves up to get a bit of a profile of what they could be doing. But unfortunately, if this happens, that means if price does come back down, we're back into the range zone again. So we've just had a little bit of volatility in the marketplace. They're going to bring it back down again. And then we're going to be waiting for the non-farm payrolls to come out tomorrow. Okay, which is at half past one. Before the market opens. Okay. What about a swing trade up to new all-time high? What for Bitcoin? Well, that's all going to be based on your tolerance to risk. Okay, you want a swing trade with Bitcoin, you might as well just go spot and just wait for it to happen. But when you start adding leverage, that's when you need to start paying attention to specific points. So your leverage in principle has to allow you to do the following. Let's consider the holders for a second. What time are we on? Okay, then cool. Look at where we are. The red vector candle said they were going to come back to that all day. But as a swing trade, you really need to be saying to yourself, if I'm going to go leverage on Bitcoin as a swing trade, all right, top, top leverage, top 5x, top, okay? Anything above 20x, you're asking for trouble because that means you have to put more margin. So a 5x trader would be able to absorb the idea of going long from this point here and setting his stop down here. He'd be able to absorb that. A 20x trader would only say, give himself a little bit of leeway, maybe going into something like this. That leeway. A 100x trader will go long from this price point right here at 67,352. That's his leeway, 67,012. So when you look at this in this perspective, you'll understand why it's so important that you don't use too much leverage. High leverage messes you up. And then you ask yourself why you keep losing, why you keep getting shaken out of trades to only see it go in your favor. So what's going on? Who are we blaming? Ourselves. We're the ones that choose the leverage. The leverage is always going to be there in the, stock, in the marketplace. You don't have to use it. The less leverage you use, the more information you can get about the move. What's that going to do for you as a 100x trader? Get it if you're scalping. I understand that. But you still have to let it play out so that you can overcome the fees. There has to be logic with this. Okay. Tino, I have considered to short at 67,500 with a stop of 69,500 to 70,000 while adding to my position around 68,500. That's too much of a tight. That, that's too tight in my opinion. Depends on your leverage. You know, depends on your leverage. If you're going to run a short from 69,000, okay, or you have a short already on 69,000, no, 
I have considered to shorting at 67,500. So the gentleman wants to consider shorting here, okay? 67,500. He's using 70K as his exit point, okay? Well, look at your environment. You've got the recovery of a red vector candle that could happen. So 70,000 is no good. You're already saying to yourself, I'm going to get stopped out because it could recover that red vector candle, wick out, knock you out of your position, and then it goes down again. So when you're looking for a short position inside of this range, your exit, in my opinion, your stop loss, in my opinion, for a short on Bitcoin, it has to be above 76 in that range. Look at your range. Has to be above that. Okay? Because then you can say to yourself, if I'm going short from this point, I'm going to now take the short entry from here, go to where my stop is. So I'm going to get the Fibonacci, take the midpoint. Go towards where my stop is, right there, and say to myself, right, if it's gone above that red vector candle and it's still showing strength, I've got an all-time high nearby. Okay, I'll change direction. Close off your trade, run along and trade towards where your stop previously was because you'll be factoring in the idea that they're going to sweep the all-time highs. You need to see green vector candles coming into play on that logic and price being above the 5 and 13 EMA. There's your logic. You simplify it by being able to do that. Trading from 67,000 and a half to 70,000 as your exit, nah, it's no good, man, because the red vector candle could get fully recovered. Okay, so just be very mindful. This is where you're using the environment of Bitcoin to decide that. It has to be outside, and that forces you to use less leverage. Ding, ding, ding. That's the whole point. The less leverage you use, the longer you stay in the game, the better chance you have at understanding how to execute. That's all. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Tino has been using the 420 method. You can tell because of the shades. My bro, you, you are a funny guy. Funny guy. It's because the lights are too bright. I have not had no endonesia. Thank you very much. I have not done any of that. Okay. I'm sharp as a fiddle. <laughs> He's saying it with a bit of hesitation. <laughs> And he's laughing. That's not good. That's not a good sign. No, really, my eyes are really hurting me. So I can't, I can't. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. We will be going live later on tonight. So make sure you are liking the live, subscribing on the way out. And make sure you hit the bell so you do not miss, miss, miss tonight's notification of us going live again. All right? Please trade safety, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll check in with you later. Mad love. Peace.